Hi folks, G3 here, and welcome to another instalment of my journey to go green. In today's episode, I want to look at the charging options that are available for travellers that are going down the M20 heading towards Dover docks when they're going on the ferry across to Europe, so France, Germany, elsewhere over there. In my opinion, they're a little bit lacking. Now I know that GridServe have recently taken over the electric highway and are looking at upgrading the charging options there. Currently, both the services on the M20 haven't been upgraded, but there are also limited options elsewhere throughout the entire route. So I just want to go and show that, expose um, just how poor the charging options are for travellers when they're going down that route. And also to give you a little bit of local knowledge to show you where there are other chargers that you can use that are a little bit further or off the beaten track that might help you with your journey. So first off, I'm going to be travelling all the way up to Maidstone from Dover. I'm going to be starting at the Tesla superchargers there, just so that I can show what's available for the Tesla drivers. And then we're going to be going on the route after then looking at places like the Maidstone services at Junction 8. I'm going to look at what's available around Ashford and then the Folkestone services at Junction 11 on the M20. Other char charging options available within Folkestone, so that's things like the Instavolt that's at Bannatyne Gym, and then looking at what's available in Dover. A little bit of a spoiler alert, not a lot, I'm afraid. Um, so I'm going to be looking at what's available at the St. James's Complex that's right nearby. Some suitable land that I think would be perfect for somebody like GridServe to take over. I've already gone and tweeted them in the past about this land being potentially available and might be a suitable point, so who knows whether they're progressing with that. And I'll also show you the other charging options that are nearby, so little um, fast charger that I use. Well folks, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy it, then please remember to click the like button. And also, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you get notified when I load up a new video. Right, let's get on with the video. They have six supercharger stalls here and they are 120 kilowatts. They are usually or often very busy. It's not a big supercharger station considering um, there aren't too many in the area. The way to access it is we come up to this roundabout by the Chiltern Hundreds pub, go all the way round, And then as if we're coming back, then there's a turning here into Sittingbourne Road. And there's a pub here, the Chilton Hundreds pub, which you could potentially walk back to um, if you wanted a, uh, a use of the facilities, toilet, food and drink. Because this supercharger station doesn't have any facilities. So here we are, just past the sign. So I'm glad I've got the um, sensors around here to warn me because it is very, very tight. Right, so here we are at the supercharger at Maidstone and there are six stalls in the ranks of, uh, and sorry, in the banks of two. So they've got 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B and 3A and 3B. Uh, it's good etiquette if you turn up at one of them that you will go in opposite pairings. So if somebody is on 1A, you would avoid 1B if there's others free so that it's not sharing the particular charge. As with a lot of the supercharger stations, there aren't any facilities actually here. So there's no toilets, there's no food and the like. What you do have is Marks and Spencers over there on the Eclipse Park. That's got a, a cafe in it. The m and is open 8 until 9 most days. I think it's 10.30, 4.30 on a, on a Sunday. So it's not... It's not easily um, accessible. And further round, there is actually a next that has a Costa in it. And that is open, well, the next is open nine till nine 
Um, I think it's nine till eight on a Saturday and 10.30 till five on a Sunday. The Costa is um, an earlier close though, it's like a 7.30 close. So if you are after uh, uh, refreshments, a coffee and stuff, so at least you've got toilet facilities and drinks over there during the regular hours. But if you're outside of those hours, you've got limited options. There is actually down this path here, through here, it's the back entrance to a hotel that obviously does have um, facilities. Now, <laughs> if you're traveling down here at night and it's, um, it's dark, I mean, they have got some lighting here, but it's not exactly the, um, the nicest um, accesses to, to get down here. And you're coming into the back of this Hilton Hotel. So the entrance is over in that direction. And uh, there you can see in the distance, the next. So that's where the Costa Coffee is um, and the, the facilities. But So out of hours, in theory, you could possibly come down to this hotel. I'd imagine that they've got a, um, a bar that's probably serving late and they may well let you use the toilet facilities. I, I don't know for sure, but it's, it's limited. And then coming back, obviously, you've got the, the pathway here that you're going to be coming up and it's going to be a bit dark at night. There is also the Chilton Hundreds pub that we passed coming in here and that is a short little walk um, five minutes up the road that you know if you want to use the facilities um, during opening times then at least you'll be able to use the toilet and grab a drink or bite to eat if you're within the, the times for food I'd imagine they might stop serving maybe nine o'clock or uh, ten o'clock something like that and the M&S just around the corner well that's probably a five ten minute walk um, and around to next so that's not that's not great that out of hours you don't really have much available here if you are heading down the m20 towards the port of dover and you're driving a tesla this is the first and only supercharger that's available on the m20 before you're traveling over to the continent there are obviously other charging options. So there's going to be uh, Instavolt, uh, Ionity, and the electric highway chargers en route. There is a marked supercharger on the maps at Folkestone, but that's at Eurotunnel and it's behind the barriers to get into Eurotunnel. So it's for travelers that are using that facility. It catches quite a few Tesla drivers out. I was speaking to a police officer recently um, who was driving uh, an MG5 and he was charging up in Folkestone. I was chatting to him while he was charging and he said they get a regular supply of people turning up at the entrance to Eurotunnel wanting to use the chargers. Now, when you've gone that way, it's to get into Eurotunnel. It's not meant as a route to uh, then sort of drive back out and, and on with your journey. So a number of times police are being called to uh, assist people that have got there with minimal charge expecting to be able to use the supercharger there so be careful when you're traveling down there in a tesla this is the place you're going to be stopping and then you're going to be using other charges it's rather limited i am disappointed that tesla don't have another supercharger sit station down towards dover port there is space for them they could well have got one in there, especially around maybe Ashford, because there's limited charging around Ashford and definitely around Dover before going um, across the, the port. There's sufficient traffic there. It's a very busy port and you think they'll be able to do that, but they uh, haven't got one in further down there. Nearby to the supercharger at Maidstone, we've also got the M&S store and they've got the three BP Polars here. And they've got CCS and Chatamo connectors and will deliver up to 50 kilowatts. They've got a range of payment options, so you can either be on the plan with them or you can do pay as you go. And I think pay as you go is um, from around about 29 pence per kilowatt. Now, this is where the uh, facilities are. So there's a cafe as well as the uh, shop and they've got toilets and the like, but there's limited hours for opening. It's not going to be open 24 hours and they do have a barrier for the car park so it would appear that that will be locked after hours uh, and potentially these aren't accessible at that time 
You do have the Maidstone services nearby at Junction 8, the Roadchef services, so that would be the other option if you are travelling down to, to Dover, and that's the most likely one. But if you were in the area and needing to use um, facilities around here, then this would be your option if you were driving a non-Tesla car and couldn't use the superchargers. They do seem to be a little bit temperamental. There's one that's out of order at the moment, and looking at ZapMap, there appears to be a bit of a, an issue with, with them on occasion, as with a lot of chargers. I don't think it's um, unique to here. So when you're travelling on the M20 towards Dover, you've got to bear in mind that these services here, you've still got about 40 miles to Dover, but you've got limited charging options as you go there, so you may well be well best off stopping here and topping up, assuming that the chargers are working okay. And there's a signpost here for the ecotricity. You might miss it if you're not looking carefully, but there is a sign to show where you're going. So the Maidstone Services, they've got a couple of ecotricity um, or grid serve, I should say, electric highway chargers. They are right at the entrance, towards the entrance of the service station, which does mean that it can get a little bit busy sort of getting around here. It's great that you know roughly where they're going to be, but if they're in a position that was sort of further away where there's a bit more space, you'd have more of a chance to, uh, to get in there. Now, obviously, these haven't been upgraded yet, but they will be soon. And it would be nice if there was a larger bank of chargers here because just with these two it's really limited um, and they can easily get full and obviously there's the problems with the reliability of these chargers at the moment and I, I know that will change once it has been uh, upgraded and you have the um, contactless payments and the faster charging but at the moment you've still just got the 50 kilowatts if you're going with the CCS or Chatamo and uh, 43 kilowatts if you're going via the Type 2. So it's not ideal, but this is one of your options for when you're charging down here. Um, and if, say, if you want to go faster, you're going to have to be going on the Ionity, uh, which is based over at Shell. We'll check those in a moment. This is a 24-hour service, so the toilets are available 24-hour, and some of the food facilities uh, are open um, after hours as well. I'm, I think it's McDonald's is open throughout the night and uh, possibly WH Smith's if I remember rightly. Uh, but not everything is open, but it is a 24 hour facility. From here, you've got a journey of around about 17 miles or 23 minutes to get to Ashford, where there are limited charging stops available. You've also got a trip of around about 24 miles, 30 minutes to get to Folkestone Services, which is Junction 11 on the M20. And they've got the electric highway there, as well as Ionity chargers for a bank of four Ionity chargers there, which deliver up to 350 kilowatts, but you're paying a premium for that service if you're not part of the Ionity network and you're paying 69 pence per kilowatt. You've also got a journey of up to 37 miles and roughly 41 minutes to travel to the entrance to Dover Port from here. Now remember there aren't any decent fast charging facilities available in Dover so you need to make sure that you have charged up in advance. So it's either going to be here at the Maidstone services or in the Folkestone area I would suggest. The Shell forecourt here at the Maidstone Services has a bank of four Ionity chargers. So they are clearly marked and labelled. You get a nice big bay here. They will deliver up to 350 kilowatts, but you're going to pay a premium if you're not on the Ionity network. Uh, that's 69 pence per kilowatt. But if you are a member of the network, you're going to get it a lot less than that, so it is worthwhile. But these are the fast, fastest chargers that you get on the route down to Dover Docks. So if you are in need of quick juice, then this is where you're going to get it. So we're going to continue our journey now and we're heading down the M20 towards Ashford to see what is available there. Considering there's so much development at Ashford, I'm really surprised that there 
isn't uh, more charging available here. There's, there's uh, slow charging dotted around in the area, but from a fast charging perspective, very limited. If you are caught short for charge and you're midway between Maidstone and Folkestone services, then your best option, I think, is to come off at junction 10 of Ashford and head to the BP garage there where they have a BP polar charge. There is only one charging unit at this garage and you'll be able to pull up to 50 kilowatts at it but it's just that one charger very limited generally i think the route down to dover docks is crying out for a grid serve electric forecourt um, in the same way that Braintree has those facilities and they're dotting up around the country. This is a prime area where that could be put in because the facilities are really lacking at the moment. Okay, it's in use. Brilliant. Okay, so this is your best bet if you are travelling down between the services at Maidstone and Folkestone and you need a charge. This is BP Willsborough garage in, in Ashford and they've got the BP Pulse charger here. So they have got the just the one um, connector here for the BP Pulse. So although there are two bays, uh, and it's got the CCS, the CHAdeMO and the Type 2 connections. There's only one that can charge at any one time. But at least it's a reasonable price and reasonably quick for what you can get on the route. So up to 50 kilowatts. Um, you're not going to be able to get faster than that unless you pay the premium for the Ionity chargers en route. They have bakery, uh, bistro and toilet facilities here and they are open 24 hours so at least you've got an opportunity here to top up a charge and grab a bite to eat and use the loo if you need to out of hours. Definitely one thing about coming to the BP garage here is that at least it wasn't so busy in the shop. I was the only one in the queue. I was able to get a few um, snacks to uh, tide me over and, uh, and keep me going whereas the services at Maidstone were really busy but you've only got that one charger. So Ashford is really poorly served. There are other chargers dotted around at facilities, but you don't have that same availability of standalone fast charging points. This would be your best option on route down. Not great. Next up, we're gonna be heading down to Folkestone Services and they are the next one that's available on route. Approaching Junction 11, and this is the one you need to take for Folkestone services. They're quite accessible, just got to go around the roundabout. Here we are at the stop 24 services. So we've got KFC, Subway, Chopsticks. WH Smith's, there's also a kebab um, and pizza place here. This is another service that can get extremely busy with white vans. It's a favourite stop off point because of the IVF facilities that are here and it's uh, just extremely popular. Wow, both chargers are currently in use. We're at stop 24 at Folkestone, so this is the electric highway. There's two units here. They've got Type 2 CCS and CHAdeMO, so that's going to be 50 kilowatts for the CCS and CHAdeMO and 43 kilowatts for the Type 2. These units are a bit temperamental. 
number of times I've been here and they haven't been working and they still haven't been upgraded yet by uh, GridServe. So they will be due in the next month or two to be upgraded. But until then, they're very temperamental. I was here a couple of weeks back and this entire car park was literally flooded. Flash floods um, from the rains that came down heavily and the drainage just couldn't cope. And so all of this area was underwater and it also included the chargers, so the cables were draped through there. We were a little bit concerned um, about the charging that was going on because it was uh, extremely, extremely wet and the surface water, it just couldn't get away. It was above the top of these um, Converse that I'm wearing, so I was wading through the water. So it's not great facilities here from a charging point of view, but at least there is space here that in the future, hopefully GridServe will be upgrading these to have more charging units in here because two isn't great they're often both in use as they are now it's just not great so it'd be better if there were more chargers faster chargers and that it was easier with the contactless payment whereas at the moment obviously you've got to go through the app to use those you've got to have the um, electric highway app installed the services are 24 hours they have got toilet facilities in there which aren't great and there are a number of food facilities but they're not open 24 hour the food units. The facilities are, so you can go to the toilets 24 hours and the IBF facility obviously is open, but the food units shut down. I was here, it was just before midnight a few weeks back and they were all closed. But what you do have over the way is there is a Shell garage, which we'll be visiting in a moment because that is where the Ionity chargers are. They've got a bank of four chargers and those Ionity chargers are 350 kilowatts, super fast but super expensive. Whereas the ones here, you can get up to 50 kilowatts. So still not excessively fast. It's okay, but it's not excessively fast. This is probably one of your best facilities before you finally reach Dover. There are some Instavolt chargers, which we will be going to shortly, but these are the last services with accessible toilets that you can get to. So these are the ones you're likely gonna be using. At the Shell Garage, they've got four Ionity chargers that will charge up to 350 kilowatts. If you're not a member, that's 69 pence per kilowatt. If you are a member, you're gonna get it cheaper than that. The thing about the um, facilities here is that they do have toilets at the Shell Garages, and there is a Costa coffee, but I think it's one of those where you have to um, just put your uh, cup under the machine. So it's not quite the same as having it made um, freshly by a barista, but at least they've got the facilities here and you can get some food out of hours, which you can't get over at the stop 24 when uh, the other facilities have um, shut down. Now these chargers are the kind that draw a very large, um, it, it's a, like a pre-authorization of the payment. Now I've done this before where I've had issues with the chargers not working and I've had to try and connect two or three times. And on each occasion, it's done a pre-authorization of, I think it was 60 pounds on my credit card. Unfortunately, it was on my credit card and I had capacity, but it, I think I had three payments of 60 pounds that were um, pre-authorized. So they keep that in reserve, ready for the final amount once you've gone uncharged. And if I remember rightly, it was held for a number of days because it was at a weekend and it wasn't released until like the Monday or Tuesday following. So it's not great. But the chargers themselves, they're fairly quick. They've got a good sized bay here. Um, they're well marked. There are a couple of waiting bays, which I am currently um, in at the moment because there was space, so I'm not taking it up from anyone. But it's nice that they've got that facility for people waiting there um, for the chargers to come. But it's, it's not a, a cheap option. And although it's right by the motorway, it would be so much better if there was a standalone facility kind of around this point or just nearing Dover where there was a whole bank of a number of different chargers, different connections and the facilities such as the um, GridServe electric forecourt that's um, based at Braintree that I visited recently. I'll include a link to the video up at the top just in case you haven't seen it, but it's great facilities. And it'd be absolutely fantastic if they had something similar here. But if you are part of the Ionity network, this is good news for you because this isn't far away from uh, the entrance to Dover port itself. You've got about, I think it's about 15 miles to go from here, something like that. 
it's not far and this is going to be your best facility. If you make it to the Stop 24 services and you find that electric highway chargers aren't working and you don't want to pay the rate that the Ionity chargers are charging, then you could always travel another six miles or 11 minutes on to Folkestone to use the Instavolt chargers if you're not able to charge here at the Folkestone services. This is your best and last real charging option before we get to Dover Port. Junction 13 to Folkestone. We're about mm, just under a mile from here. So it's going to be a couple of minutes and go into the uh, Shearway Business Park. Now we are currently, well, at 10 miles from the entrance to Dover Port, and that's gonna take about 14 minutes drive from here. I've used these chargers a number of times and found them to be extremely reliable. It's not a bad cost, 40 pence per kilowatt hour, um, considering it is quite a fast charge. It will do up to 50 kilowatts on CCS for me. It also it has also got Chadamo connectors. Now this is your last realistic chance of charging at any decent speed before you get to Dover docks. There are one or two facilities within Dover, but they are very slow. Now they are the contactless payments, so you're touching the, the screen to start and stop, and so it's a very easy process. But the thing is, regarding these facilities, is that although it's at a gym, I don't believe there's public access in there. There aren't any toilet or food facilities here. There is a, a short walk, a five or 10 minute walk to the Brickfield um, cookhouse and pub. So you've got that option, but otherwise you don't have facilities available here. So we're gonna move on now to look at Dover itself and what is available there. Uh, it's not a lot. If you are approaching the port and you are running low on charge, what are your options? Well, within Dover, there are a few slow charge points that they've installed recently at some of the car parks that will give you seven kilowatts and they are part of the connected curb um, setup. There is um, an EV charge online charger at the St. James shopping centre, but I tried using it the other day and it looked in an appalling state and I was unable to connect to it. I really don't think it's fit for purpose, so you really can't be relying on that, in my opinion. So you don't actually have any fast charge facilities now that you're approaching Dover. The option that you do have is to keep traveling beyond and go to a local Lidl store that has a pod point charger. And that's where I'll often go to get my charges. And I can get up to, well, it's a 50 kilowatt charger and it would deliver at a very reasonable price. I think it's um, 25 pence per kilowatt hour, if I remember rightly. But we've got all these facilities as we approach Dover. So there's some uh, BP garages there with a range of um, petrol and diesel pumps and washing facilities, but no electric car chargers. And we're not far from the, the docks now. There'll be a lot of people regularly coming this way that are traveling onto Europe, going across the ferries. So it really does seem ludicrous to me that there aren't any facilities of note for fast charging, uh, capacity fast charging, with lots of available bays for, um, for vehicles. We've seen the facilities haven't been all that great for fast charging on the route towards Dover Port, which is further along the road going in that direction, and it's only just around the corner that the port is. So a lot of traffic coming along here that is going to be holiday makers going abroad, We've also got people that are traveling back through to Europe. What we have here on the old um, site here at Townwall Street is where, it's where the Dover Leisure Center used to be. It's been removed, there's still car park facilities further over, but it's a large space on a prime bit of real estate going into towards Dover Port in the distance. To my mind, these facilities are perfect for a grid serve type electric forecourt. It has ample space, it's got great visibility, it's on the prime route towards the Dover docks, which is just around the corner. But this ground seems um, ideal for me. It's right by um, a retail facility. So we've got things like um, M&S, uh, Costa, Burger King, 
uh, Trespass Card Factory. So a number of retail units that are over there. So this is my thought for fast charging um, for people traveling via Dover Docks, because en route, you haven't got anything of note. So this spot here, prime location, I reckon. So we've made it to the entrance to Dover Docks. It's a journey of approximately 40 miles from Maidstone. And as you'll have seen, the fast charging services aren't that great en route. We've got up to 50 kilowatts available at the Ecotricity or um, GridServe electric highway chargers at the Maidstone and Folkestone services. There are the Ionity chargers at both those services. And although you can draw up to 350 kilowatts, you are gonna be paying a premium of up to 69 pence per kilowatt hour at those facilities. So it's not great for the regular traveler. The last Tesla superchargers we saw were back in Maidstone, so that's 40 miles away. They haven't got any other facilities here on route down apart from inside the Channel Tunnel facilities. So if you're traveling on the Channel Tunnel, that's fine. But if you're heading down to the port, there are no Ch Tesla superchargers for you after Maidstone. Also, you've got the uh, Instavolt chargers available at Folkestone at the Shearway Business Park, and you can draw um, up to 50 kilowatts on those and it will cost you 40 pence per kilowatt hour. We've also seen that if you do need to get a fast charge in Dover, you can nip up to Lidl, which is about three miles away, and you can pay, I think it's 30 pence per kilowatt hour there for drawing up to 50 kilowatts on the pod point charger. But they have only got a couple of bays there. They um, are quite popular, so they're often being used. So, um, you know, if you're after a last minute charge before going um, across the channel, you're leaving it a bit late. As we've seen that there are some um, grounds nearby that are just around the corner from here that are vacant at the moment from where the Dover Leisure Centre used to be before it was knocked down. So that is a potential site for a electric forecourt, possibly if GridServe want to go there. Um, please, pretty please, that'd be much appreciated. It's definitely somewhere that could be utilised um, and a real location before people get to the um, ferry terminal here at Dover. And as um, the electric car uptake and electric van and lorry use is increasing all the time, there's gonna be more and more people um, traveling with electric vehicles that are gonna need charging facilities before they get here to Dover Docks. So I think that's a prime location. Well, there you go. Thanks for joining me on the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please click the like button down below. And as always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please do so and click the bell icon so you get notified when I load up a new video. Well, thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.